Learning English. Word stress in acronyms and abbreviations. Welcome to our English language learning video series. In this episode, we will explore an essential aspect of English pronunciation. Word stress in acronyms and abbreviations. Understanding how to stress these condensed forms of words is crucial for clear and effective communication. So, let's dive right in. Acronyms and abbreviations are commonly used in English to shorten lengthy words or phrases. They play a significant role in various domains, such as technology, business, and everyday conversation. Acronyms are formed by taking the initial letters of each word in a phrase and pronouncing them as a word, like NASA, for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Abbreviations, on the other hand, involve shortening a word or phrase without creating a pronounceable word, such as limited. For limited. When it comes to word stress in acronyms, it's important to remember that only certain acronyms have a specific word stress pattern. For many acronyms, the stress falls on the same syllable as in the full phrase. Let's take the acronym UNESCO as an example. In the full phrase, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, the stress falls on the second syllable of educational. Therefore, when we say UNESCO, we maintain the stress on the second syllable. However, there are exceptions. Some acronyms, especially those with four or more syllables, have their stress shifted to a different syllable. For instance, the acronym NATO for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization has the stress on the first syllable, rather than the second syllable of Atlantic in the full phrase. Remember, it's essential to check the stress pattern of an acronym in its full form, especially if it is unfamiliar to you. This will help you accurately determine where the stress should be placed when pronouncing the acronym. In the case of abbreviations, the stress pattern is more straightforward. Most abbreviations, regardless of their length, tend to follow the stress pattern of the full word they represent. For example, let's consider the abbreviation professor. For professor, since the full word professor has the stress on the first syllable, we keep the stress on the first syllable when saying professor. Similarly, the abbreviation Jan for January maintains the stress on the first syllable, just like the full word. By understanding this rule, you can confidently stress abbreviations and ensure effective communication. While there are general rules for word stress in acronyms and abbreviations, there are also exceptions and special cases that deviate from these patterns. For instance, some acronyms and abbreviations have unique stress patterns that differ from the stress of the full phrase or word. It's crucial to consult reliable sources such as dictionaries or pronunciation guides to learn the correct stress patterns for these exceptional cases. Congratulations! You have now gained a deeper understanding of word stress in acronyms and abbreviations. Remember to pay attention to the stress patterns of acronyms, keeping in mind that some may deviate from the original word's stress. When it comes to abbreviations, you can generally follow the stress pattern of the full word they represent. By mastering word stress in acronyms and abbreviations, you will enhance your English pronunciation skills and improve your overall communication abilities. We hope.